Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to my Let's Play Star Citizen episode 168. This is currently, uh, is it 3.0.1? Um, so it was a uh, live version, so we still haven't hit 3.1 yet. And also, this game, I'm actually talking over it. I, I, this wasn't meant to go on the channel initially. Basically, what happened, I was editing my divinities. I had to put it up for the day, the next day. I was uploading it. I thought, I'll have a go on Star Citizen. I haven't pl played for a while. Maybe I can get my missiles back on my ship. Maybe I can finally do a co-op version of um, Pirate Swarm. Well, I sat in co-op. Didn't work. So, I basically jumped into single player. And I thought, you know, I'm going to do Wave 3, 4. It uploads. Yeah, going to be blown once or twice. Because I haven't played for a while, the frame rate's probably going to be horrible, and I will leave it, and that'll be it. But after doing it, I felt it was a really good game. It had some problems, but I felt it was a really good game. So I've actually divided it into three episodes. This episode, next episode, and the episode after. What hopefully will, will end, and then, fingers crossed, because we're in March then, we'll get the 3.2 patch. So hopefully after 170, my episode 171 will be that patch. But we'll see, we'll see. So, for the next three, I'm talking over. Like, I'm trying to remember what I was thinking at the time, because so, this was ridiculous, this game. Because at the end of it, my left wrist, you know the one I'm using for my WAS, because I was using keyboard mouse, I wasn't even tempted to try my joystick, was killing. I literally couldn't sleep the next day. It, basically, I was holding my wrist, and I couldn't sleep, because every time I tried to turn up, it was hurting. And it was doing that for about two or three hours, I was like, come on, and, and it was even worse, because I was supposed to be going with my wife to her sister's house, it was a three hour journey next day. And because of that, I end up, we end up leaving two hours late because when I did finally get to sleep, my like, well, we gotta go, we're going. So, no, I need to sleep, I need to sleep, my wrist is hurting. And then I fell asleep for two hours, woke up, and my wrist was fine, phew. But we lost two hours late because of it. But I'm, I'm kind of glad we did because I think this is an amazing game, this one. Like, normally, I w you have to see the ending of it first. But normally I would say, nah, nah, I shouldn't have stayed up the extra bit. But it, it, it was a combination of one more turn, but Star Citizen version. You know, one more wave, one more wave. And I'll talk about quickly a few problems I had with this waves. What you obviously see as these waves go on. But basically, some of the problems I had with it is like some of the AI seemed to fly out of the area a few times. But, but at the same time, I'm feeling when they did that, is it because... I maneuvered them out and I'm an amazing pilot, or is it more a bug? Probably a bug. See, like this, like they fly very close to it, and if you see, I'm, I was very aggressive with this. And one thing you do notice the frame rate, I didn't put the little uh, doofus thing up, you know, the control thing to see what it is, but you can tell the frame rate is so much better than the PU currently. It was a breath of fresh air. This is what I want to do in the PU, fighting wise. This is what I want to uh, basically do, be able to fight properly, so if I lose, it's because of the lack of skill. Not because the frame rate says I should lose. And that's what a lot of PU's been of late. That's why I'm hoping and praying the next big patch, 3.1, is actually going to fix that. Or at least help it, at least. Because I believe the, is it the curling they're doing in the roadmap is actually been put behind. It's been put behind um, for the next patch. But a lot of the other stuff's done. As you see with this, I was looking at this stuff and I was trying to work out which the shield was as well. And I think I ended up converting it because I tried to move more power there. I can't remember if I did the right one. I, re I found out recently that when I'm doing some more weapons, the one at the top is the shield. I didn't know if that was a shield or the bottom was a shield. I think the bottom's a speed, so I actually did do it correctly. But I was worried it wasn't. I was actually thinking about it, I don't think that does much difference. Thinking about it now because I watched a video recently where he kind of explained some of this stuff to, uh, about it. And that's 67, I believe, what you know, see is 67 in the bottom corner. That's how much power my ship is draining. It's using 1501, or is it 1601? I'm, I'm talking over the pre-recording, so it's not, it's a little blockier to me than when I, you know, export it for you. So you'll be able to see the number. But either way, that number is what the ship is currently drawing from, apparently. Oh, that was beautiful. That was beautiful then, that explosion. And like I say, it, it, it's... Um, what the ship is drawing from, that's, that, that's, so in other words, I'm using 67% of the ship's power. Meaning, I've still got plenty of power to use, so moving more power to my weapons isn't actually helping. Because I believe that's basically, if say I was drawing 100% uh, or 110%, and also you can't do the 10%, meaning my shields will come up slower, my weapons will fire less, moving that over to shields would really get, get, prioritise them to, to take the juice faster. Or the weapons will prioritize them to take it faster. So what I've done, I thought was helping, it technically wasn't. It's only if I was having trouble. But also your shields, apparently, 
when they recharge, if they go down, they almost double that power intake. Well, it's quite interesting, well, I didn't know that. But I do think it's only going to affect what I'm drawing, so... Okay. So you look at the moment, at, at the moment I'm, I'm playing this, I'm just thinking to myself, eh, my divinity's still uploading, you know, maybe another wave or two, I'd be quite good. I'm quite impressed that my frame rate is amazing, was good. Oh, the other problem I had with the weather, well, I didn't mention, what you might have noticed, you know how um, uh, the Pirate Swarm, what this is of course, has the whole arcade feel, in the sense, I blow him up, he drops uh, little symbols for missiles and stuff. It did happen, but not very often. Like last time I played this, before 3.0, this is literally every one you blew up, drop them symbols, so you could get instant re missiles, instant thingies, uh, you know, uh, repairs, anything. If you see, they seem to be dropping very... Actually, I don't think it even dropped at this point in time, but some do drop during the game, but it's very far in between. So in one sense, the game was harder because it's dropping far in between, but on another sense, it was easier because I did find some people were flying out of the area, but again, was it because the AI is a little buggy, or was it because I was really aggressive? Because you see, I was trying to stay as close to them as possible. Because if you notice, especially later on, I end up really trying to push the and control my speed to be as close to them as possible. There's some times when that doesn't happen because my arms are getting tired, my wrists are like... Ugh. And you see, most of the AI is fighting back. And one or two did end up smashing into some asteroids as well. And of course the AI of the um, actual... Uh, my side, co-ops, is in there too. And also sometimes you, like, you blast them and hit them hard enough, they lose velocity they spin, and before they can take control they smash into some sort. So, again, some of these crashes, some of these leaving the areas, are they AI being buggy, being bad? Or is it that, you know, we've hit them such a way that we sent them into that? Is that a good pilot on us, or is it luck on our side, a bad luck on their side? I, I don't understand now. You're watching, you could be the judge, what do you think? So you're like, like that, like that's awesome. If I could do that in the PU currently, oh, I'd be happy. Mwah, I'd be so happy. And really hoping the next patch. I know it's not going to completely sort it, but I'm hoping it's going to give me enough frames so I can do this. Because you can see, uh, even on this, I think it just pause on now and again. The frame just drop now and again. But theoretically, for the most part, the frame rate is beautiful, isn't it? Especially when compared to my videos with the PU currently. But the exact same thing happened with um, 2.0. Two points because uh, if you remember correctly, we had Arena Commander. Was, well, technically, we had the Hangar module first, um, and then when was it Arena Commander first? Second, sorry, Arena Commander, and then the Social module. I think it was Arena Commander Social module, but Arena Commander was just like with the Hornets only, so everyone got alone a Hornet, and then Social module came out. But either way, Social module was a little laggy. Arena Commander, beautiful. Then they added more ships, beautiful. Then we finally got 2.0. You know, the Holy Grail at the time of Star Citizen, where we were finally going to get planets involved, massive sp uh, space areas to fight, I think all the 16 missions, and that's beautiful. See that, see that, that's it, how do you drop the stuff? See, that time it worked. That's what I'm talking about, the little symbols, the, the, the dropping far, uh, far in between. I think that might be the first time, unless I'm mistaken, up to Wave 3 when it's happened. Anyway, back to my, my Holy Grail thing. But then when 2.0 came out, it was like the Holy, Holy Grail, like I said. But the thing is, when we got into it, the frame rate, well, oh my, my, it, it was like it, it, night and day, different game. The frame rate was so bad, it was almost impossible to play it properly. You tried, because you could see potential, but it was horrible. And then they got 2.1 out. And then, mwah, mwah, kissing for everybody. The Holy Grail hit its peak, and you could have beautiful frame rates. Yes, they still crashed. Yes, the frame rates dropped now and again through other patches. But theoretically, it was playable. With all this new content, it was amazing. And then, of course, uh, we, we, we've gone back and forth, good uh, patches, bad patches, added new content, etc, etc, until we hit 3.0. The first proper state, well, the first proper version, should I say, not stable, proper version of ground floor of what Sauce is going to be, was actually having you land on planets within the current system, having stuff moved around, having, I think, I believe it's over 100 different missions that could come up, uh, randomly come up, well, not 100% random, I think it's supposed to do with certain stuff that happens in the game, but it's basically there's a potential of 100 different missions. And we then went to the horrible frame rate again, what we're in now. Where it is playable and you can push it, but uh, it is a pain to play at points. And you know, we got the cargo stuff and that, but you can see the potential. If you can get the 3.1 to be what 2.1 was, 
the game's going to be amazing because it's got so much more content in. Plus, they actually turn some missions off to try and help the frame rate. Or they would bug too much. But I believe some asteroids were spawning over Port Alice a lot and crashing servers. So they can fix them. Theoretically, that will bring back the 100 off missions instead of, I don't know what they're up to now. Because they turned so many off. There could be like 50 missions, 40 missions now. So we'll get so much many more missions they can fix it. And it's going to be, basically to me, if they can keep with the fixing every other patch, uh, the new frame rates down, well, sorry, not down, up, up, frame rates up, <laughs> every other patch optimization. And then, this game is just going to grow and grow and grow and be better with every patch, so to speak. But we've got to get over this initial 3.0 hump, as we had with the 2.0 hump. Oh, that's a beautiful explosion. Well, wait, we're now free. And I free respawn at this point I'm doing pretty well. And considering this is the first time I've really done this mode in months, for the simple reason that A, when I tried to load in, it loaded in with literally just, just I don't know, in scrap, it's just like you're flowing in space, so you could your ship wasn't even there. Or it wouldn't load it at all. Or I loaded in and my 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 um, guns weren't working or something. Like now, as you see it, I to fix it, you've got to go to the main PU, add the guns to it. And then yeah, you can come over here and it works, but then we go to PU and it, and it gets lost again, you can't use it again, and you have to swap them back and forth. So I find that every time I go to PU, I have to recut the guns, almost a little silly, but I have to. Because I think last episode I realised that, didn't I? I? I went in my last episode, and my guns were the old guns. You know, I did have a lot of fun with that. But that's the first time I've actually had real fun with the combat. Even though with that, as you saw, a lot of the, uh, the non-play characters weren't fighting back. I had like one or two fight, and then three or four didn't. But well, I could actually kill things, and it was quite fun when the ones who did fight back. I even got to control a non-player character, a Starfire, with a non-player character flying at one point while I was getting shot at. That was awesome. Oh, that's beautiful. Also, also I believe uh, this is... Um, what's the name of them? Because there's two maps for Arena Commander currently, isn't there? This is the Dying Sun map. As if you... Like, if you're Star Citizen person, you already play, you already know what it is, but for the people who haven't made the jump, the leap in Star Citizen yet, and maybe checking this out to see what it's like, this is the Dying Sun map. And again, oh, another beautiful one. Oh, I like that, he knows that. Um, on the right corner then, it's just just disappeared. It was glowing like the bottom of the frame above where the screen is. It was like bright red. That's also like the explosion. I don't know if it's because it superheated my, my, my ship, or that was a piece of his ship that hit it, but that looked like it was glowing red because of the heat, because it was so close to the explosion. That was cool. See, little details like that, what's going to make Star so amazing. Like, when I was playing there and I'm concentrating, I didn't know what's that, but I got to see it now watching it. You see, I'm t I do keep banging into them a little bit, I'm trying not to, but I'm trying to stay as close as possible to, st to keep my guns on unfocused, to try and keep on the speakers. I read somewhere that your, is it hips, as it's called, you know, the little indicator that's a target zone, apparently has a, a kind of an auto attack. If you can keep similar speed, it would try to auto correct your aim a little bit. Not completely so, you know. Oh, well, that's cool. Not completely as in, you know, it locks on, it fires, you can never miss. Rubbish. It's more, it tra tries to help a little bit. And that's why I was also trying to do this. I was trying to use my M button for a while as well, because that used to be match speed, but I kind of gave up and I started just using W and S in the, in the end. <laughs> So this guy, Glazius. Well, of course, I'm in the Saber if you want to wear watch your boss flying. I don't think I've jumped to the F4 button during this yet, because I was talking about a lot of stuff around this. But my what, what, the easiest ship, well, he's blowing up, actually. Well, it's actually the first ship that came out of the Manchester studio, so the first British ship, so to speak, for Star Citizen, what's pretty neat. And it was also, it came out for the official day Oh, that's beautiful. It came out on official day, or actually my wedding day. Back in 2014, on the 12th of July, they went up sale. Because I remember waking up that day and seeing it on sale for the first time. Pre-ordered it, they went to my wedding. <laughs> and another uh, interesting fact about that uh, day, to do with Star Citizen, not me, uh, is basically, at the time, people complained, Star Citizen always misses deadlines, always misses deadlines, always misses patches. The Glazier came out a week early, uh, basically. Uh, when it finally came into the game, so not about that day particularly, but when it finally came into the game, they said, I forgot the date, but they said it's going to come out. This date, it actually came out a week early. So when people turn around, they miss every single patch. They miss every single deadline. It's kind of bull because the Glazier came out a week early to what they told us. So they were actually ahead for that time. So you can't just blanket them, they, they, never, they, they always miss deadlines, they don't. 
Glazier, for example, it, when it finally got into the game, it was a week early. Again, because I was looking forward to that, that ship, and I remember. That's cool. To like the bits, the way they flow. Where, is this the part where I saw the guy floating? There's one bit when I did this, I saw the run and the non catch play catchers floating. I couldn't quite see them, but then again, like I said, as I'm recording the talking for this, I am watching it on my recording software, so it's... So I export it so it's not as clean and cut as it was when I played or when you're watching it. So he might have been there then. If not, he's a bit later on. Because I remember him floating, I remember that part and zooming in, like, oh, that's so awesome. But when I started zooming, I kind of lost exactly where it was at the same time. Oh, this is what I'm talking about. Quite often with this, some of them would fly out the area. But was that because of bad pilot on their part? You know, a bug? Or was that because I was putting pressure on and forced them out, being a good pilot on my part? Not 100% sure. If you want to put down uh, in the comments what you think, because I'm not trying to say I'm the greatest pilot in the world, because I bloody well am not, that's for sure. <laughs> but was that actually a good pilot in my me that pushed him out, or was that a bug? And that was just, I don't know, look by my side that pushed him out then, I guess. <laughs> I like to think that was a good pilot by me. It doesn't happen often, but when it happens, I look like it. I love that I've just said that, and my guy just smashed into him. I like to say it's a good pilot by me, and I bang into the guy. Yeah, always show myself up like that. <laughs> <laughs> it comes to piloting. <laughs> Look at this amazing move I do! And then I, I smash into someone after it. <laughs> oh, look at this. Beautiful, like side passing. Do you see, I'm trying to uh, turn it correct enough as I go past to get back on the. I was going to say the throttles, not the throttle, is it? The, um, the afterburners, or, you know, that sort of stuff. To get straight on him to stay in the correct distance from him to keep hitting him. Because you see, I think 2300 is quite nice because he's, he's big enough to hit. If I stay on top of him, he's technically shooting from the front dash side ish, so he's not really hitting it the same. Oh, like that, he's taking it to me. Look, my shield's completely down. The front shields. And I'm also trying to keep eye on that as well because that's another thing I tend to mess up. Like, I get shot like that, and that thing, my shields go down, and I stay there, and I get blown up. So when that's happened, it's like most of my shoes are like, crud, try and pull away, pull away. So I'm just trying to be a little bit more versatile when, when I'm under attack. When it pushes simulation boundary. So this map's beautiful. I don't believe they improved it for a long time. So eventually you would think they'll improve it and it'll be even better. Because they improve everything with Sostis and overtime, don't they? Because again, it's not a released game. Ah, see there. Repair things popped up. Like I said, it's far in between for some reason. In the old, before 3.0, everyone you destroyed brought, dropped one. I think the only thing that may not drop was the odd missile symbol. I believe that's because the person supposedly used the missiles beforehand. Like an M50 may not drop a missile, for example. Where a Connie would drop like five. But I think it's to do with they fire them off or not. But every ship dropped the symbols uh, so you could repair yourself, re, -re ammo you know, like I said, missiles, etc, etc. Everyone did it, so it it made it a little easier, but at the same time... Uh, the old version of Reader Commander, it was uh, basically people would use the missiles up, and then when they respawn, they would get a new set of missiles, so it made you want to respawn to get a new set of missiles. Well, with, uh, with the current version, it doesn't do that, and I also think, if you remember correctly, when you get to Wave 3, you also got a new set of missiles too. So if you get to beat way three, you've got a new set of missiles and bullets. If, unless I'm remembering wrong. But also when you respawned. But now, if you respawn or get to the waves, you don't get that. You get, um, uh, I believe, if you're playing with someone else. Uh, that is what I'm not with this. Is you technically can respawn someone if you beat a, a wave three, wave six. Basically. Or at least an extra life for them at some point. Is, that, is, either, is either every... Elite wave, or it's something like once you do wave 12, I think. So, if someone's been dead from say wave 6 to 9 to 10, I believe it might be wave 12, they come back into the game. I, I think. Again, I haven't done the quad mode in this for a very long time because of the problems I've had with this mode. What am I shooting there? Uh, oh, it's a Hercules, so you know, you can't really tell, can you? Look at it, it's got no wings or anything. Boom! But that's one thing I do wish they would add for Star Marine. Because sometimes uh, non player characters are like this, some AI to fight. Because sometimes, just like with this mode, I jumped in court mode, no one joined. 
I jumped into a battle royal before it. No one joined. Why? Because the bugs in the game currently, so they could they couldn't want to, or the ones who have managed to get in have found that other people with bugs haven't joined, so they've given up. Or people in the PU. Or people have just, you know, waiting for the next patch. See, like him, I, I meant to push him out, or was it bad idea on his part? Don't know. Or is he game coming back in? Oh, maybe. No, 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 he didn't. That was one of the few where they, like, tricked me and came back. Uh, but anyway, like I said, but then I could jump into to the single player, as I'm doing here, uh, Pirate Swarm or the Vandu Swarm, and voila, I can have fun. Because the PU's frame rate's horrible at the moment, this is beautiful, so I can still have fun with the game. But Stormy doesn't have that currently. I need AI. And with, uh, sorry, I need uh, non-player characters. Oh, sorry, Ugh. words, words. I need human characters currently, that's what I'm trying to say. You know, technically I do need AI still, because that would make it so I could jump into single player and play Star Marine. But I need human characters, if no, I think it's, is it four players have to join? Four, I think it's four or six players have to join for a game to start. You can technically two players there, it's greyed out, the, the screen's like grey, you can run and kill each other. But it means nothing and it's not the same being grey. But if I could like, try that, no one's playing, ah. Uh, Jump into single player and AI versus Star Marine, that'd be beautiful. Because then I get to test it. Because you don't really get to test and keep your skills whole in uh, in the PU currently with the frame rate being horrible. This way you can basically go to PU, have a little game, and then maybe half an hour, hour later, jump into Star Marine or jump into a Pirate Swarm or Vandu or a Swarm, for example, and hone your skills so when the frame rate's better in the PU, you're on top of your game. Instead you get that rusty, as you said, a huge mistake then. I end up smashing into the asteroid and I've lost a wing. And I'm having trouble trying to get out of the asteroid at the moment without killing myself. So yeah, that, was, that was probably one of my biggest mistakes of the game at this point in time. Well, it was the biggest up to this point. And as you see with my shooting, my left hand side's got two shooting now. And I believe, as you see, my right side's got one. I lost one of my guns, so I'm not going to hit as hard as now. So I really need someone to drop a repair thing at this point. Well, you see me far and that between at the moment. But I'm still not giving up, as you can see. Then you're there, I was testing it, that's why if I just left, I was trying to test to see if, if I lost the gun or not. I assume they have, but there has been the odd time, the odd bug, where you still kept your gun and fired, even though your wing's missing. For some reason, so I was just testing to make sure. Well, that's what I think Star Marine really needs, a single player mode. With some AI, and then, like I said, I can hold my skills on it so when the PU finally gets to the state Star Marine is, because A, in the PU you ain't going to get as many Star Marine type fights or AI combat fights as you are in the Arena Commander and Star Marine. So you can really hone your skills so when you do get home you know what you're doing, instead of being that rusty. And they're getting so rusty that when you do get into a fight you panic and the other person's not as rusty and blows your head off. <laughs> and you're like, oh this is the same, you have three hours to get combat and that was it. You know, you want to have three hours of combat and then boom, boom, just like, ha, good fight, God, this is really awesome, this is epic. That's what you want. You see the AI, like, I think he is trying to dodge me, wouldn't you say? How he's spinning around and stuff. So I think the AI is pretty good still, even though they're obviously, like, it's not perfect, you can improve it, of course. You know, the one thing with, with the new Star Marine that I, I'm sorry, Arena Commander, that I don't like, is the barrier system. In the past, they used to have a system where you, it's, it's months and years since they changed it, I believe, but you used to fly through and it come up 10 seconds to get back in it. So you had a little breather to turn around and get back. Now, the minute you fly through it, even like an inch over where you should, boom, instant death. And I hate that instant death. Because it means you make one tiny mistake, you cannot correct it. Where before you could correct it, it's like 10, now oh, crud, 8, sugar, turn around, turn around, 6, 5, ah, oh, view. And it also allowed the AI to correct it too. So the stuff like when some of these are flying through and they're instantly dying, they would be able to turn around and come back. You know, like the guy earlier, how he flew on the edge and came back. If he flew too far, I think that one did that, it's instantly death for him, and that makes it easier for me. But the thing is, that would make it fairer, and it would also compensate for the AI messing up or me pushing them into it. So it would make it a little harder at the same time, so improves, uh, makes the game better for me, a little easier in one sense for me, but also a little harder. 
because it's obviously works for the AI and me. I have that little safety net to come back, so a bit easier for me. The oh the AI have that safety net to come back. Like you've seen in this so far, how many have gone through that and died? At least five, six, haven't they? Minimum. That's six more coming back at me. Who I've got to deal with now. So the, the difficulty's instantly been increased. Even though I had the little safety net when I fall through, like technically I haven't fallen through it once yet, so I haven't needed it yet. I will admit, at some point in this game, I do need a safety net because I do die because of it. But that's later on. I don't believe it's this episode. I think we'll cut it next one or the third one. But you'll see anyway. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to record this one as I'm doing now. Even though I've got the other two bits there, I'm going to probably cut them a little bit next week. And maybe there's anything else with Star Citizen, like the patches come out or something, and I can talk to you about it if it has. For example, that might be the best way to do this. So I believe my next one is going to be like, same as this, maybe 25, 26 minutes. This was a 27 minute one, and I think my last one is 30 minutes, I think. But I'm said, I'm hoping it will come to PGU, and then I'm hoping it, after I've done these two episodes, it comes out live for everyone. You know, 3.1. Then I can put it on the channel, that'd be awesome. And again, if you're enjoying this, if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. Because if you're unaware, uh, February 20th, well, it's obviously past. All channels with about 1,000 subs or over 4,000 minutes of watch time have been demonetized. Well, I think it's a load of bull. So, I really need to get the subs up. So, if you like this or know someone who does, please sh share it. Please um, just get them to subscribe. Because I think the hardest part is getting the subs initially, because with the watch time, time it's over 12 months, I believe I was just under 2,000 last time I checked that a month ago. So I've, if I've got that with over, I think, oh, I'm about 130, 131 subs, just under 2,000. Technically, it would make sense that if you double that number, you would have just under 4,000. So if you if double that again, what's going to bring you to well, about 800-ish subs? I would easily have over 4,000, so that's not the problem. It's getting the people to sub and directly watch isn't it that's the problem the subs especially then if I can get to a thousand subs and keep it above thousand then if the, the minutes were down that's when I need to push for people watch everything please watch everything <laughs> but for now I think I'm gonna end this episode as you see I got my wing fixed Yoo so like subscribe and please sub please if you haven't already and please share with people you know what's up as I've told you saying bye for now everyone have a great amazing day bye see you next week for part two